in our last video, you saw us fasten the chine logs into place. We've bedded them against this first plank right here, and they're in there nice and tight. And the next thing for us really to do here is to drop the side frame in and fasten it to the chines and fasten it to that first side plank, and that's what we're going to do. But we just thought the first thing we do today is to trim off this little bit of excess plank in here that hangs down below the chine log that everybody wonders about and get rid of this imperfection here, this knot and the one on the other side. And uh, you'll get a real good look at the profile of this boat at the chine at that point. I'm going to use a reciprocating saw here because I think this is the easiest way. And one thing I'd just like to show you is, is that I've ground the set off the teeth right here at the forward or the very bottom end of the saw blade here so that it can't do any damage or cut the chine log in any way. So let's just pick it up and get started. We're going to start right here near the form where there's not much to cut off and we're just going to guide along using that chine log as a guide. And uh, it's not very hard to cut because you're only cutting a little piece of cedar here and you're cutting along with the grain. The only thing you need to be careful of is you don't cut down into the chine log on the outboard side. And it's very easy. You just watch what you're doing and we're actually going to cut along and cut that knot right off that's been plaguing everybody all this time. There's probably a number of different ways to do this. Some shipwrights might use a slick and try to slick it off and you could use a skill saw. You could do all kinds of things, but this is the method that I'm using and I think it's the easiest and fastest way to go. We're just finishing up that first cut and we're going to saw along until we just contact the stem a little bit and stop right there. We're just going to go over to the other side now and do exactly the same thing on the other side and come sawing along until we contact the stem on that side. I'm using a bit brace here to remove the screws that aren't necessary. Uh, they were just in there just to really stabilize that joint between the side plank and the stem so when I bent the chines it wouldn't pop the side planks off the stem. Then I'm going to slip a handsaw into the two cuts that I've just made and I'm going to saw right along parallel directly athwart ships until I get very close to the rabbit line. Then I'm going to change the angle of the handsaw and just concern myself here with the port side and uh, saw along until that port side is ready to remove. All right, watch this. Then I'm going to taxi over to the other side and use the same hand saw and do the same exact thing I did in the first side until I can remove the piece on that side. I'm going to take a chainsaw now and just lop off the excess just a little bit longer than I need because I'm going to make a vertical cut after that and it's just a little bit long so I don't want to have to saw all the way down that rabbit line. I might as well just remove some of the stem first. Now I'm drawing a line between the two rabbit lines across the bottom of the stem here and I'm going to use that line to get started and I'm going to use my thumb to actually guide the handsaw until they get going and I can see that line across the bottom of the stem and the one vertical line, the rabbit line that I'm sawing along and I'm going to concern myself mostly with that and once I've got down close to the plank and where the finish line is here, I'm going to switch over to the other side and finish that cut up from the other side. Now I'm going to slip that handsaw back into the horizontal cut and saw along until I meet up with that vertical cut. And then I might have to go back and forth just a couple times to finish it up. Once that's done, I'll be able to just knock that piece right off. So we've sawn that excess material off along the chine there and I've cut it off nice and flush up forward at the stem end there but the saw might have wandered just a little tiny bit here. We didn't saw in too deep but I've got a couple of little lumps here so I'm just going to pick up a block plane and just tune it up a little bit. Right now what I'm doing is planing away at just the cedar itself and I'm out to just get that cedar flush with the outboard side of that chine. We're going to have to do a little bit more planing later on to get it flush all the way across so we can drop a straight edge right straight across. But for right now, we're just trying to make it look a little bit more presentable. I'd like to show you the very first frame that we've gotten out here. Now, it's made of the same exact material that the chine logs are made out of. It's a yellow bark oak. It's a very healthy frame for a boat this size. It's an inch and an eighth thick. It's two and a half inches of thwart chips. I wanted to have it that big because I want quite a bit of material down here where the frame contacts the chine log because I'm going to try to get two screws in there to hold it up nice and tightly against the chine log. Now, like I said, 
This is exactly the same angle at the, as the top of the chine log, so it's going to have a parallel space in between there. We're going to have a couple of screws going up through here to hold it to the chine log. And uh, the other thing about it is we don't want the medullary rays to be exactly in line with the screws. So we try to pick some lumber that puts the medullary rays on a little bit of an angle like this, or even this way. But most of it's going to end up kind of diagonal like that, and that's fine for us. So what we're going to do now is going to put it in place, take a look at it. Now we're going to clamp this frame right into position here on a temporary basis, and you can see that half-inch gap that's between the top of the chine log and the very end of the frame. Now, like I said before, there really is no reason to have the frame contact the chine log right here. It doesn't do anything for it, and I think it's a very nice look. It makes it much easier to manufacture these frames, because that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to manufacture about 30 of these frames, have them be all identical. It should happen very quickly, because we just don't want to waste any time doing that, and there's a number of little operations to take care of that. I'm going to show you that later. Now, there's going to be, I believe, 14 frames on this side and 13 spaces. So, that's the next thing we're going to do, is go over and set up to manufacture these frames exactly like this. The other thing about this is, is that there's a little roll in this side plank right here, a little cupping, and when you clamp it into position and fasten it, you want enough of them so that it holds that little cup out of that plank perfectly. It also rolls the chine just a tiny bit so that it contacts the back of the frame here. And we're going to put a couple screws right up in here, holding the chine and the frame together. And like I said before also, the medullary rays are kind of an angle like this so that when we drive the screws, it won't split it on the medullary rays. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is kind of go aft here and show you just a little bit about how we're fairing out the corner of the transom and the chine log and the side plank. You can see that I've dubbed down the outboard end of the transom and the after end of the chine log and side plank to be nice and even with each other, nice and flush. Now I'm over here on the starboard side and I'm going to take a pencil and draw a little line on the very bottom edge inboard of the chine log here and then on the inboard edge of the transom. Now that's a control line. I'm going to flush this corner off and dub it right down like I did on the other side, but I'm not going to remove any of that pencil line because that, like I said, is the very control spot. That was put together nice and even in that corner. We don't wish to change that whatsoever, change the shape of the boat. Just flatten it off by deducting some of the material off the outboard edge here and the outboard edge of the transom right here. Now we're going to use an electric plane here to accomplish this. And uh, I just want to show you a few things about the plane and how we go about it before I get started. I probably wouldn't even be able to accomplish this, even with the same exact electric plane or any other electric plane, if I couldn't hold the trigger down, because I can't do it with my hand up here on the top, even if I'm holding the front. I'm just totally out of position. It doesn't work for me. So I've decided I'd make a little gizmo to hold the trigger down while I'm planing. I've taken a zip tie here, and I've put it around the handle, and all I really have to do is just taxi that little zip tie up on top of that lump right there, and it holds the trigger down. Now I can hold the plane on both ends kind of like I'm holding a number five plane. It's got a handle in the back and a knob in the front. I can also adjust the depth as I go along. I'm going to start off cutting off quite a bit of material, and then I'm going to reduce the amount of material that it cuts off and just kind of keep planing and then just tune it up a little bit, and you'll see that I can cut off quite a bit of material or just a very small amount of material. It's going to come out nice and flush, just like the other side, accomplishing the whole task with this machine. Now this is a very delicate operation, and I've got a very aggressive tool. So I've got to start off with it adjusted where it doesn't even cut, and then work my way up to it so I know exactly how much I'm going to take off. Now I'm going to start off taking off quite a bit of material, and then I'm going to reduce the amount of cut as I get closer to that line. This is a project I used to accomplish with a number five Stanley plane. It's much harder to get yourself in trouble using a hand tool than it is with this electric plane, but I still think that this electric plane, after a little bit of experience, is the right tool to be using. And you can see I've flushed down that corner really nice and flush, and I have not removed those two pencil lines. 
We're up forward here now, and you can see from here that the boat is a nice flat bottom boat all the way up until about five feet after the stem here. Now it's got about a four inch rise up here. That'll help keep the bow of the boat up on top of the waves a little bit and help it ride a little bit differently. And uh, there is some dubbing to do at the chines. You might be able to see that. We're gonna put a pencil line on the inboard side of the chine log here, just like we did back aft, and dub it down about one degree. We've sawn the chine logs at five degrees, but it actually requires somewhere around six degrees. So we're gonna accomplish that before we put the bottom planking on later on. And the next thing we're going to do is get these frames out and get hanging them in the boat.